Greetings, everybody. So here's something I want to hit like and subscribe, by the way. Help the algorithms. Help a brother out. I um, was looking at um, an article I was reading about Victorinox um, changing up their Swiss Army knife a bit. How are they changing up the Swiss Army knife? By creating models that don't have knives. And my initial reaction was one of, are they caving to, you know, becoming woke? Are they caving to, oh, knives are bad, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, that's because that's the way most things are today, right? <laughs> um, that's the world we live in today where we pander to criminals and, oh, the criminals are doing something bad with item number X, so let's just ban that. And then they pick up something else and they do bad things. With, okay, let's ban that. Let's ban this. Let's, in, instead of going after the behavior, instead of going after the people, politicians are very weak and they feel it's easier to just go over whatever tool the, the the bad guy happens to grab. Well, if we ban that, then they can't be bad. No, they can. They're just going to be bad with something else. Um, and so that's what I thought it was because, you know, Victorinox is a European company and I know the UK has been pushing crazy knife laws because they ban guns. So everyone's going around stabbing each other. So they're like, oh, we got to ban knives now. And is it, and, and European countries tend to be very strict with knives. Like in Germany, you can't have a one-handed knife, but you can have a locking knife. In other countries, you can have a locking, uh, one-handed opening, but not locking. And, you know, it's a tool. What you do, with it's like anything else. It's not a weapon. Uh, a baseball bat isn't a weapon. A screwdriver is not a weapon. But if you jam it into the base of someone's neck or something, well, then it becomes a weapon. You're using it as a weapon. But most things that are referred to as weapons are not. Knives are simply tools that go back to the Stone Age, literally the Stone Age, or making them out of flint, making axe heads and knife blades and skinning blades and stuff. You know, this is a tool that's been with man for tens of thousands of years, if not longer. So it's always crazy to me that they're looking to block those things and ban them just because a little tiny percentage of 1% of the population can't seem to behave. Um, and, you know, and you can argue, no, guns are differently because unless you're hunting, well, what are you really using it for? You know what? That's a different argument. And we have a constitution and it doesn't really matter what you think. We have a right to defend ourselves. But with knives, there are lots of legitimate everyday uses for like the average person, men, women, teenagers. It doesn't, you know, you're opening boxes, you're preparing food, you're cutting string, you're, you know, something got snagged or tied up or the, the you know, whatever. And you, you got to cut it loose. That happens literally all the time. So I used to carry, you know, more tactical blades and stuff and then got into the Swiss Army knives and, and into these types of things. And I sort of think about kind of like my journey, my progression of what it is I carry and why and, you know, things like that. And I saw that news article and I was like, Ugh, come on. But then I really started thinking about it. And when I, when I actually read what the CEO or whoever it was at Victorinox said, I was like, you know what? There are some merits to it. Now, they wanted to go to get rid of the knife blade because that, you know, there's a lot of other tools you use, but in countries that are really strict about that kind of stuff where they don't trust the citizens to behave, they, so they disarm them. And they consider even small little knives and pen knives to be arms. And so they, they don't trust their people. So and you may be from that country and that might insult you, but... And your government says, I don't trust you to, to, to have this. I don't, you can't be trusted to walk around with that unless you could really show you have to justify why you need that. If your, if your government tells you that, the reality is they don't trust you with it. <laughs> so, But I started thinking about what they were talking about. And, you know, in those countries, you know what, it is what it is. And until the people riot, you know, get some balls and rise up and take their goddamn governments back. And I don't mean by force necessarily. I mean, elect people that aren't nincompoops and punish criminals and punish the people that abuse the laws and leave the law abiding alone. Until most people are willing to do that, well, if you want to sell product in those countries, you have to accommodate. The laws are what they are until the people see fit to change them. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'll give you that. And then I started thinking about it. You know, I've been carrying... I really haven't carried these kind of knives in a long time. I've been carrying more of these, Swiss Army knives and, and, and you know, tools like the Leatherman Arc and stuff like that because I, I do find a use for the tools. And I would say, for the most part, they work really well. But there are times where I'm like, you know what? I need a one-hand... I carry this because this, 
you know, as an example, because this has all the kind of tools. It's the most compact tool chest you're going to find. This is the Swiss Champ. I got a fire starter. I got a corkscrew. I got a hook to grab something or pull a knot or whatever. I've got saws. I got pliers. I got a goddamn magnifying glass if I'm trying to read the lettering on a watch battery and I'm like, I can't quite see what battery it is I need to, to get. And I can zoom in. I mean, there's a million things I use this all the time for. But the one thing that doesn't impress me is, well, this is really great as a tool and it's phenomenal as a tool. Got to tighten a light switch cover. And, all right, well, there's a Phillips screwdriver. Boom, don't have to run out to the garage and get one. The reality is, as a knife, it's subpar. Now, if you're just looking to cut an apple and little things, it's one thing, but it's you gotta pull it out of your pocket, you gotta figure out, okay, which knife do I want? I gotta pull that out one-handed, and then if you wanna be really careful, be careful, keep your fingertips out of there, you can do a one-handed close. But it's a two, it's a two-handed operation, and it's a very small blade, and it doesn't lock into place. So if you did have to stab into something and people think, oh, stab, is that a weapon? No, I have to stab into a thick packaging of sockets or something from the auto parts store. I have to worry about that thing cutting. I have to be careful that my hand isn't there because if that closes on that, you're going to do yourself some serious damage. We're talking tendons, nerves, stitches, not having a good day. So then I look at knives that are more along the lines of this. And this is probably as close to being like an ideal EDC. But even here, it, it's a Leatherman. I don't really care for some of the tools. I don't care for the bit driver. I'd rather have a designated um, Phillips head. Um, you know, a lot of these other tools, they say, well, you can open everything one-handed. Yeah, but it's a bunch of extra movements and things. And I don't like that tool. So I, I'm <sighs> the scissors are okay. The file on it is okay. The saw is not as good as the Victorinox, although it's okay. Certainly as a pair of pliers, it's really good. So this, this does fit the bill in a lot of ways. But it's not as good as a dedicated knife. This is, while this may be the best example, you know, you look at this. This is slim. This has actually all the tools that I want and would need. I've got files, saws, pry bars, can opener, bottle opener, Phillips, flathead, scissors, and it has a one-handed opening blade that you can almost close with two hands, but not quite. It's a bunch of, you know, it's not, it's not and just use it. But even here, the blade is kind of small and wimpy. You know, can I do some cutting with it? Can I do a basic stab into something? Yes, this gets me close, but it's it's not a great blade. As far as knives go, as far as a multi-tool that has a blade that you can do some cutting with. It's adequate. It'll do the job in most cases, but even that falls short. So then you say, okay, well, what about this? I've got pliers on here. I've got scissors. I've got saws. I got a metal file with a hacksaw. I got Phillips screwdrivers, two different sizes, right? I got underneath the scissors here. I can go ahead and pull out. I got a, a big Phillips. I got a small Phillips. I've got different options here. And I do have a, a big blade, which is going to be better, but it's one-handed opening. Really nice big blade, though. That's a good working blade. But then I still got to have two hands opening and closing, and it's still pretty damn big in the pocket. And it doesn't give me that quick open, close, you know, do what I need to do. The other downside is while these get kind of close, and then I've got a nice big blade, and there's other Victorinox knives that I could get that are one-handed opening and closing, but the steel on them is not that great. For tools, it's good, tough, corrosion-resistant tools, but the blades are kind of soft. You know, they'll take a nice edge and they'll sharpen very easily, but you will have to sharpen them a lot more often. It's not a high hardness steel that they use. They would rather have it be tough. And if you're really using it hard, they'd rather have it dull and you resharpen it, or you'd rather have you bend it and have to bend it back because at least it'll still work bent as opposed to it snapping off and now it's useless. So there's always concessions to be made. So I started thinking about that. I'm like, you know, as much as I love these as a tool set, none of these, even the new Roxxon's cool because I did figure out, someone uh, gave me some advice and said, hey, move the blade over. And now I do have the blade and I've got the uh, saw. And on the other side, I've got the metal file and I've got the scissors. So I did get the four long tools in. I just had to figure out the order. So thank you to whoever that was, pointing me in the right direction. But these are great as tools, but again, if I want the knife, I have to figure out, well, which side has the knife? Okay, it's over here. That means I gotta pull it, pull the knife, push everything back in, and then I can use a knife for basic knife stuff and put it away. It's still not a great 
knife experience. You're getting a great tool experience. You're getting a great handy, anything you might run into on your daily basis. And you do have a knife, but the knife experience itself is lacking. As opposed to having a proper Spyderco, right? With S30V, really nice swift, swift action. Boom, open it, do really nice cuts, really good ergonomics. The handle is designed for knife and cutting things. Over here, it is one-handed opening, but the handle kind of sucks. It's not comfortable. There's sharp edges here that kind of dig into your hand. And I feel like if you were really using it a good bit, you'd start to get hot spots or a blister. It just wouldn't be a great experience. As opposed to a knife that is designed to just sit in your hand and facilitate knife shit, right? Same thing with the Delica. Really spot on ergonomics, good locking blade, no wiggle, nice high grind. As a knife, it blows anything any of these have to you know offer out of the way. Same thing with a bug out, boom, use it, cut it, boom, back in your hand. Really nice, sits in the pocket clip, no pocket clip, no pocket clip. Pocket clip, these did come with them, but there were the other concessions, right? As a knife, none of these is as good as that. None of those is as good as a $70 Kershaw Blur. Nice, strong, durable uh, aluminum handle. Speed assist opening. It is one-handed opening, is one-handed closing. Pocket clip, really nice. You got OTFs. We got our axial gear shift. 20 CV steel, considered a super steel. Really nice action. Sits in your pocket, always ready to go. Boom, open it, do your cut, put it away. You don't get any of that good knife action out of these. And it seems like if you want to have a really good knife, it's going to suck as a multi-tool. And if you want a fantastic multi-tool, it's going to be mediocre at best as a knife. And that's what I've come to this conclusion. So then I'm thinking about this. And while the reasoning may not have been that, that might not have been their plan, the plan might have been, well, we want to sell in countries that are cracking down since 9-11 on knife stuff. Well, what does that mean to me? If I'm not really crazy about these knives and I'm really kind of, I'm slumming it when it comes to a knife, can I get little basic tasks done? Yeah, but I think I, it, this to me is a pen knife. It would not be in any way suitable for self-defense. It would not be in any way suitable for stabbing into things or using it as a, as a um, hard use, you know, just for making basic cuts. And if that's all you need, well, then keep buying these. This one's a little heavier duty, but it's a big boy. And it's still a soft steel that if I were using it, I'm going to be sharpening it all the time. So I'm like, you know what? What if they took a Swiss tool and they got rid of these two blades and the fish scaler? And I will never use that for anything. But if they got rid of the blades and the fish scaler, that would take off two um, layers well, is the fish scaler on its own or is that mixed in with the... Well, it would, make that, it would make that one thinner, right? So they could probably have the file together. You'd basically remove one and a half. You'd narrow it by a few millimeters and thereby make this a true pocket tool. Now, I don't know if you could get it through airport security because you got a corkscrew on it, but it would be a lot more TSA friendly and there are TSA friendly multi-tools that do not have blades on them. So would that allow me, yes, I'd have be carrying two items, but if that made this one a little bit smaller and it just got down and dirty to the actual tools that I would use on a daily basis, corkscrew, fire starter, um, ballpoint pen, your tweezer, your, your, your toothpick, magnifying glass, different screwdrivers, a freaking little mini set of pliers, files, wood saws, can openers, bottle openers, a pair of scissors, and you had that sitting in the bottom of your pocket as just a tool, and that's all it was. You wouldn't get in trouble at work. You wouldn't get in trouble in a government building or somewhere if you forgot this and this was in your pocket. You could still have your tools with you, but you leave this in the car. You know? Does it make more sense to carry a slightly smaller, true tool in a Swiss Army knife format that everyone's familiar with and has all the tools, but the blades that are kind of meh at best? Then you carry your bug out. You carry a freaking Delica for actual knife stuff. And you just have two tools. And for just pulling something out real quick to make a cut, boom, you got it. 
If you want to carry an OTF, you want to, I mean, there's no shortage of knives that you can carry and have lightning fast deployment with good ergos, with good blades that are designed for cutting with good quality steel that'll hold a good edge um, and not require sharpening all the time. That can let you pierce into something if you had to without a lot of fear of cutting your fingertips off, right? And doing yourself some real damage and having to go to the hospital and having a pay your thousand dollar deductible or whatever and have your hand in a cast for a couple of weeks while your tendons heal. I feel like that might not be a bad idea. So it kind of, once I thought about the reality of it, even if the reasons for doing it were kind of like pandering and caving to what I think are pussies, um, let's just, that's just my opinion. Um, but you know, if you're unlucky enough to live in one of those countries and you're not going to up and move your family to another country over a stupid knife law, I get it. That's not really reasonable to expect someone to do. So, you know, if you're just some poor schmuck living in those countries and you're, you want that multi-tool, but your government doesn't think you're worthy of, of carrying a knife because they don't trust you, um, then I think it does make sense for Victorinox. And for me, I think it might be a, a, a nice buying experience to go get something like a Swiss Champ uh, or a Deluxe Tinker or something that gives me all the tools and, and stuff that I want that I'm constantly having to run out to the garage for. But if I want to get actual cutting done, I go to the blades that are designed for it. You know, having the right tool for the job. You've heard that phrase, jack of all trades, but master of none. There's an element of that here. You know, these are good pocket tools that are really handy and have the basic implements, but the pliers are, oh, you know, they're, they're okay for little small tasks and the blades are kind of, mm, it's a blade, it'll work, but it's not a great blade. It's not a great knife experience. I mean, you think about this thing, your hand doesn't want to hold a knife that way. You want to hold it this way. I mean, the way your hand is shaped, your hand curls, or if you grab a big um, fixed blade knife, it's going to be wide this way and thin this way because your blade would be up and down in this plane going this way, right? And the edge would be on the bottom. You'd hold the knife like that. Well, holding the knife like this is not a comfortable experience. It's awkward and it wants to twist and turn in your hand. And that's where when you're doing stuff with a slip joint, with an awkward, goofy handle, it's where you risk slipping and stabbing or cutting yourself. Same thing with this one. I open that blade in order to get all the tools. It makes this tool very wide. That one's a little bit better. It's a little bit narrower. And because it's longer and the way it's curved here, it does fit my hand a little better, but it still feels like I'm holding a two by four or a, or a fixed blade knife the wrong way. This is where my hand feels like it wants to be. When it goes this way, it just, I don't know, it just makes it feel awkward. It does throw the ergos off. These are okay and they're much better as um, pliers, but they don't tend to have as many tools as some of these and they take up a lot more space in the pocket and so they're not ideal that way. Everything is a concession, everything's a trade-off. And maybe ultimately it makes sense to carry two tools. One that would just be multi-tools, and therefore the ergo is not as critical for knife uh, use and things like that. And then carrying a spare blade that's just a blade. But for cutting tasks, that's what you want. Like, that's a properly designed blade. That is something that really does what you need it to. Much safer, much better, more durable, and easier to get in and out of, you know? My hand's tied up, I'm holding something, I've got to grab something and keep a grip on it, and then I gotta open it, cut the bag open, and put that back in my pocket and go on with what I'm doing. How do I do that with this? I gotta put the bag down, I gotta pull this out, go, is it this side? No, nope. let me turn it around, let me do this, and then do it, and then I gotta close it and put it away. It's a whole bunch of extra steps. Can you do it? Well, yeah, obviously. But if I have a choice, why wouldn't I maybe take something that's gonna be a little bit, not spidey flicked in ages. <laughs> because I haven't been carrying this kind of knife. Um, so I, I'm rethinking that. I'm rethinking that. I was going to kind of do a video on, ah, oh, they're caving and going woke and pandering to the anti-knife crowd, but eh, from their business perspective, it probably makes sense to open up additional markets and still sell something, even if it doesn't have a blade. But for those of us that might be like me, and you're thinking, mm, I carry it, but as a knife, it's really not great. I have to be very careful, and it's kind of a pain. Um, and then this thing is, you know, you can't close it one hand because it goes the wrong way. So then you're trying to pull the spring with this and do it this way. And then you got to shift your grip. Whoops. And it almost fell out of my hand. So <laughs> you know what I mean? This one's better because you can open it and close it. I would say the Arc's got the best knife of all of these. Um, this one's decent, 
but it's not as easy to close it one-handed. And the blade's really wimpy. I mean, look at, the, look at the blade on this damn thing. You got this big, long tool that they could fit a really nice, longer blade, you'd think. And the blade in here is actually slightly smaller than the damn regular Swiss Army knife. This is just a pen knife blade. It's not a great blade, and it is that softer steel. So, great tool. But as a knife, eh, a lot to be desired. So anyway, tell me what you think of this. Tell me what you think of Victorinox going, and if you're the kind of person that does the dual knife route, does it make sense to carry a multi-tool and maybe even look for a Leatherman or look for another company that just makes multi-tools without knives, and you just got your little portable tool chest with pliers and screwdrivers and shit? And then clipped in your pocket, right there ready to spring into action, is a proper, proper knife. Let me know your thoughts.